Okay. Good morning, everybody. I'm Teresa Coates, and we are back for Sew Together Tuesday. I'm really excited because we have been, well, I have been on the road for a while, and um, now I'm home, like the rest of you. So we get to sew together this week, and I'm kind of excited. We're going to do three days of sewing. So today, tomorrow, and Wednesday, we're going to come together, and we are going to make the little Kimber Bear. So I don't know if you've seen it, but this little guy, he's been out for a couple of weeks now. He was introduced... Um, I think the end of February, he came out from Kimberbell. And so it's been a joint uh, project with uh, Shannon Fabrics, with Kimberbell, and with Clover. And so we've gotten together to create this little project that you can make for yourself, but they're really super easy and they're a great project to do together so that you can make them for charity. Okay, so this is what we're gonna work on today. So this little guy is made out of our Lux Cuddle Heather Sangria. Um, it's very, very pretty. And uh, this is just a, like a purple one. You can use all sorts of Lux Cuddles. So any of our Lux Cuddles will work for this project. Um, if you're not familiar with our fabrics, there's a couple of different kinds that we have. We have Lux Cuddle and then we have just regular Cuddle or Cuddle 3. So for this project, we use Lux Cuddle because it's the fluffier kind and it will hide all of your um, stitches and it will hide any mistakes that you make which is my favorite thing about the Lux Cuddles. So we really recommend that you use a Lux Cuddle for this and not just a regular cuddle or a cotton fabric it'll look a lot better. Okay so what I wanted to show you here is this guy is put together um, super easily and we just put these things all together at the end and I'll show you that but what I do want to show you and I'm gonna let him come do a close-up so I'm here with my partner because we're quarantining together um, but you can see in here this is just zigzag down and because of the Lux cuddle it will just flip like come out so it hides your stitches really well if you do this with a cuddle or a cotton what will happen is all of these stitches show okay so if you've got some Lux cuddle there's lots of places that are still delivering um, that you can get your get more if you'd like to like I said this one is Lux cuddle Heather sangria the one that we're gonna use today is Lux cuddle quartz and that's this one here okay so we're gonna use this one for our little guy today I've also gathered the rest of my supplies so we'll go through what you're gonna need for it um, what we've got here is a strip it says a quarter of a yard but you need an 8 inch strip of Lux cuddle of whatever kind that you want to have it's all good they're all gonna be super cute for me I really like the Heather or the Hyde marble galaxy those are all really good because the fibers kind of go in different directions so it'll hide all your stitches um, which is really the point so um, something like we have Brooklyn we have some others that are sort of stripy chenille some really cute ones but they won't work as well so try to find one that has um, some yeah some movement in the fibers okay so we're gonna have a strip, like I said, this is just a, um, an eight inch strip. So it's the width of fabric, 60 inches wide of the Lux Cuddle, all right? Like I said, this is Heather. And um, this is the one, if you've seen the videos at all, they use this one in the videos too. So I'm using that. And then we also have just a tiny little scrap of pink regular cuddle, which you could use um, a, just a solid cuddle for this or like a felt if you had it, and that would work as well. If you have any solid cuddles, these work perfectly. And cuddle is actually super good for applique because it's a knit, it doesn't fray. So once I get these edges, get the fibers off, this is gonna stop. So once I cut this shape, it's actually not gonna fray anymore, which makes them really, really good for applique. So this will be for the little heart that we're gonna do, and this will be for his nose. So we just have little scraps of that for you. And then I have some eyeballs, and I'm going to use these little um, safety eyes on mine is what I'm going to do. You can also do it with embroidery, or you could do it with hand embroidery. Just do some satin stitches with um, an embroidery floss, anything that you want to do. But this is what I'm going to use on mine, show you how to do that. So if you have them, you can do it that way. You could also use little buttons if you were doing it for an older child. Um, I would just make sure that you did um, buttons that had the four holes and not a shank button. Okay, so other tools that we have for today, I have the pattern. You can get the pattern online. So it's at Kimberbell.com slash Kimberbear. There should be a link that will come up in the comments about where to find it. Okay, so you can go download that. If you have any troubles, just let us know, comment. Okay, also, who's here? <laughs> I forgot to ask you guys. So leave a comment. Let me tell you. So leave a comment. Tell me where you're at, your city and state. Um, we're going to be doing a giveaway at the end. So what I have is a little kit that I put together that is the same fabric that I'm using today. And we're going to give away a kit every day. So if you keep coming back, we're going to be here giving stuff away. Okay. So this is a strip of the fabric, the same as what I had. And the little pieces 
of cuddle for you, some floss if you want to do the stitched eyeballs. I have some thread in there for you and also some safety eyes. Okay, so we'll be giving this away at the end. So if you leave a comment, tell us where you're at, tell me what you're working on. Leave any questions that you have for working with Cuddle. I'm really happy to answer all of your questions. My job normally is to travel around to stores and teach you all of this. So I'm, um, I'm excited to be able to do it here and maybe reach a lot more people. So let me know what, what you want to know. And if you haven't been able to come to a class, this is your opportunity. Okay, so we're going to be giving this away at the end. So leave a comment. We're going to be drawing the random comment for it, and um, we're going to give, we'll give this away at the very end, all right? So um, then you can make your own. And like I said, we're going to do that every day. So you'll want to get the pattern, okay? So here's the pattern. It's a 16-page printout. Um, they have two kinds of patterns. So the way that they did this is um, they made a, an embroidery pattern and a sewing pattern. So if you have an embroidery machine, you can actually download the files and it will print or it'll um, stitch it out in the shapes that you need. I don't have an embroidery machine, so I'm doing it the old fashioned way with my sewing machine. Um, the old fashioned way, it's a very nice modern machine. Um, and so we're gonna do it with the sewing instructions and not the embroidery instructions, okay? So if you have an embroidery machine, you can download those, those files. If you wanna do it with your sewing machine, you can absolutely do it that way too, it works just fine. I've made, uh, I think like four of them now. Okay, so we've got our pattern. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna read through the pattern and figure out what we need. I've got a bunch of the supplies here, okay? And I've got some things that I'm gonna use a little bit differently than they do, but not, um, not vastly different, it's just my own personal preference, which we all have, okay? So I've got my fabric, I've got my um, stiletto that I love. If you've been to any of my classes, you've heard all about this thing because I really do love it. It's um, by Annie Stiletto, it's got a nice long point, okay? And we're going to use that when we're sewing because it gives me a lot more guidance when I'm sewing. I have a lot more control with it, okay? I've also got my Ulfa cutter, which is um, basically... Uh, it's kind of a combination between an X-Acto knife and a box cutter, so it's pointier like an X-Acto knife, but it has the snap-off blades like a box cutter. So it makes it really good for cutting cuddle, and I'll show you how I do that um, later to, um, it keeps the mess down a little bit, okay? I've got a water-soluble marker, I've got a little, um, this is another stiletto, this one is from Clover, and it will let me hold things, but I'm also going to use it to shove down the stuffing, all right? So that's what I'm going to do, and then I've got my Sharpie. Okay, and my scissors, so these are my little fomores. These, I really like these guys because they are um, serrated, they're micro serrated, so they grab the fabric really well. So if you don't have this little blade, but you do have little scissors, we'll totally make this work. I'll show you a couple ways of cutting it, okay? I've got my rotary cutter. I've got some Solvi. This is water soluble stabilizer. I'm gonna use as a topper when I am doing his face. So we're not gonna use this today. We're gonna use that tomorrow, um, but you're gonna want that. I've also got a little glue stick and my favorite clover pins. Okay, and I've got a little mix here. Oh, and some wonder clips as well. All right, do we have any questions that I need to answer yet? We're good? Shout out to Saskatchewan. Awesome. <laughs> Yay. Okay, so let's get started. All right, the first thing we're going to want to do is I'm going to cut this guy up. So the way that they put this together is really pretty clever. I'm just going to move some stuff out of the way here. Okay, it's really pretty clever um, because what we're going to do is we're going to make it with the paper as a template. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these guys apart. Um, you're going to have a whole bunch of rectangles of this that are six and a half by eight inches, basically. And according to the pattern, I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. Okay, so they're six and a half inches. So if you have the fancy little ruler that has the extra half inch, this is the perfect time for it. Um, mine is six inches, so I'm just going to add a basically a half to it um, and I'm going to show you a couple of different ways of cutting it okay so the mess working with cuddle is probably the thing that people makes them a little crazy um, and I totally get it because it can be messy but there are a couple of different ways of dealing with it so I'm going to show you my favorite way is using that Ulfa blade okay so what I do is I just mark it and I'm going to mark it with my sharpie here okay I'm going to go for it and I'm just going to pick about a half an inch there I'm going to draw my next line, okay? Now I've got a couple lines drawn. I'll just keep going across as I go. But this little guy is really the thing that makes it so much easier. So when you cut cuddle, the thing to remember is that you want to just cut the backing. So you can see, you can see here we've got a lot of fiber that's up here. 
okay? This little nip backing is what we want to cut. So when we cut, all of this stuff gets loose and flies everywhere. If we just cut the backing, it doesn't do that so much. So let me show you how I do it. The trick is to hold a little bit of tension here, okay? And then I'm just going to drag this guy down. Okay, you can see it'll slightly pull open. I don't push real hard just in case because you can see as I do this and I pull it open, you'll see that it doesn't cut the front so much as it just cuts the backing. So what we're getting here is all of this, if I were to cut this with a rotary cutter, all of these little fibers will come off and float around my room. So you can see there's a whole bunch that comes over on either direction. And when I cut it like this, you'll see when I move these apart, there's really very little mess. Okay, and definitely not the mess that's flying around and being obnoxious. So if you've worked with Cuddle before and you've been frustrated with that, this little guy is a really good trick for that. Okay, this is just an Olfa tool. It's available at a lot of, um, a lot of quilt shops. All right, so we've got this. Let me show you the other way. So if you don't have one of those little blades and you don't have a, a sharp exacto or anything that you could use. So you can see there's a little bit of fiber that comes off here. See? But I can sort of just push that off and get rid of it. Okay. All right, so the other way of doing it is with the little scissors, all right? So this, I'm going to do it from this direction. So you saw with the Ulfa, like I always try to pull it this direction, okay? And I keep some stress over here and keep, keep um, the tension up here while I pull it. With the scissors, I'm going to start at my side, and I'm going to do the same thing, and I just want to catch that backing, okay? So this is one that when we do this in class and I tell people it's little bitty cuts, they don't think that I'm serious about little bitty, but it's little bitty cuts. But you can see I'm just cutting the backing fabric. So I just tuck the scissors just under the very edge and just do these teeny tiny little cuts, okay? And if I kind of keep some tension back here, I can get it to go pretty straight and pretty fast, okay? And I'm just going to take my time. So you can totally do this with... Um, a rotary cutter, 100%, you can cut it with a rotary cutter, okay? But what happens is you just have more mess. So it's absolutely doable, and you just have to sort of, you know, um, you decide which one you want to deal with. So either one is quick. <laughs> That's interesting that it's all on that side. Um, so <laughs> it's going to be either quick and messier or a little bit slower and less messy. So you kind of just have to decide which one is more important for you. Um, at this point, I'm totally going to cut these with the blade. I'm going to cut these all apart. And then um, when we cut the pieces apart later, I'm actually going to do that with the scissors, okay? So I'm going to lay these in pairs as I go. I'm going to pet this to make sure so all of my nap feels like it's going this way. Hyde and Heather and a bunch of the others, Marble Galaxy, the ones I was talking about, the reason I like them is because the nap kind of goes in a swirly thing. So if you can't tell which way the nap is going, it doesn't matter. Okay, that's a little trick there, is if you can't tell, it doesn't matter at all. So I'm going to put these guys together and I'm going to cut out three more pairs of them. Okay, so I'm just going to basically mark them and do the exact same thing again. And I'll... Uh, I'll do the last one with the rotary just so you guys can see what the difference is, all right? So I'm going to cut these apart. And like I said, this is a really good way of doing this pattern because we've got a lot of curves in it. And um, this will make it a little bit easier to sew, especially if you haven't sewn very much cuddle before. This is a great, um, a great starter. And I know Kimberbell has worked... Um, to create a nice website that tells you some ideas on what you can do with these bears once you've made them. They're a great project to make right now, um, and you can use them for all sorts of charity things, um, foster care, firehouses, um, all sorts of things, homeless shelters, um, anything that you might want to make those for. And we're going to just cut these apart, and I'm going to stack this over here. Okay, I know some stores are planning um, to do like little charity sessions where they'll get people together. And that's gonna wait a little bit, but um, after this is over, we'll all get together and sew them, okay? All right, so there's two sets. And then I'm gonna do another one. And you can see I'm just eyeballing my extra half an inch. Um, the way that the pattern is done, that um, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's one of the things about cuddle in general is that things do not have to be perfect because we're working with a knit plush fabric. 
All right. Do we have any questions out there? Does anybody want to know anything? Um, what was the name of the Ulfa scissors again? Or the the Ulfa cutter. Ulfa cutter again? It is like, it's, let me see if, if I can see a number on here. It's the SAC-1 for graphic arts is what it says. It's, um, they call it a stainless steel snap-off blade is what it's listed on their website. Um, yeah, so this is what it looks like. Deep, deep, deep. Okay. So you can look for that, baby. A lot of shops have them. You can also, let me see. Oh, well, I should have found it earlier. There's a little, there's another little one. Let me, I'll look around just a second and see if I can find it. There's another little one that Ulfa makes that has like a little push out blade. Okay, a little yellow one with little, or white one, and they'll push out. Let me dig through my stuff real quick and see. If I have, I know I have one, but you know how sewing rooms are. Um, they can be a little crazy. I don't see it. I'll, I'll try to find it for tomorrow, and I'll show you guys, because it's this little blade that pushes out. Well, I figured out a way to hold it that you can cut it the same way, so if you have one of those, it'll work, um, because you have to hold it and push it at the same time. It gets a little bit funky, but I figured out a technique um, at the last store that I was at. So um, I'll show you guys tomorrow how that works, okay? This one works really well. I like it because it has an easy handhold. The other one isn't quite as, quite as easy, but it's still doable, okay? So you can see, like, it doesn't cut all the way through sometimes, and I'm okay with that. I just come back because, really, I'm just trying to keep less mess, okay? All right, so I've got three of them. Okay, last one, and then we're going to have a little hunk at the end, okay, that we're going to use... Um, for its muzzle. Okay. Actually, and I think this one is, yeah, four by six and a half. So I'm just going to do four. I'm not going to care if this is more than six and a half because it is if I measure this. It's more like seven, but I don't really care because um, it doesn't matter. There's a whole lot of not necessarily waste, but there's extra on here, so it doesn't have to be exact, which is great. Okay. Um, and you'll notice that I'm doing all of this from the back of it. I don't measure from the front basically ever. Um, you just can see better on the back, which makes it easier to get a nice cut. Um, and it, you can cut it from the back, which makes it less messy. So um, this is always the way that I do it. And I mark it first. With the Sharpie, it doesn't really matter. It's not going to show through. The only time that you have um, an issue with that is if you're using a white or a light yellow fabric. And then it will, but you can use um, the gray silver Sharpies for that. Okay. All right. All right. So now we'll get all these cut. And then I have this little scrap that we can use for something. Also, there's a ton of other patterns and stuff, not for this size scrap, but there are a bunch of patterns on our website for other things that you can do with your scraps, like little pillows and stuff like that that work really well. Okay, so now I've got all my pieces together. I've got all my four, okay? So if you're at our, you are at home and you can, you can take these and put them in your dryer and let them knock off the dust. Um, there's not a lot of dust on these, so it's really not that big of a deal. So I'm actually just going to give them a shake down here um, and get off the dust so that when I'm working with it, it doesn't keep going. Um, but it's really not too bad at all because the way that we've cut it. Okay, if you cut this with a rotary cutter, there'll be a lot more mess. Um, so I definitely suggest that you take a vacuum to it or your dryer. Okay, and that dryer trick is really great. Um, I use it a lot when I'm making bigger stuffed animals. Like the, um, we've used the Funky Friends factory patterns before, and those when I'm doing those, I always want to throw them in the dryer. Yeah, there's a question. So, what's the overall schedule for this project? How long do we expect it to take, and how is it being set, uh, broken up in days? Okay, so so we're doing it for three days. So today we're going to do all the little body parts. We're going to do the arms, the legs, and the body, 
and then tomorrow we're going to do the face, okay? And then we'll put that, the face and the head together and the little ears. And then on the third day, we're going to get back together and we'll put the whole thing together and I'll show you how to assemble it, okay? So that's how we're going to do this project so that we can take some time and um, work together. So I hope that you'll be back tomorrow. Um, otherwise, you're only going to know how to do part of it, so you got to keep coming back. Um, <laughs> and at the end, so for those who weren't able to... Um, who aren't able to join us for the whole thing or if you just like you come in late whatever we're gonna put it on YouTube when we're done so there'll be a whole um, a whole process of it that'll be just this little live version okay all right any other questions we're good all right okay so now we've got our sections all right so we've got our um, four basically couplings of these together okay the way that the pattern is done <clears throat> if I can find my pattern pieces there they are so it has all of the instructions walks you through all of it. I do it just slightly differently because that's what I do. Um, but we have all of our pieces here, okay? So the way that they come is you're gonna cut these guys out. So we're just gonna do that. Um, we're gonna cut these out real quick and, um, and then we put them onto our fabric, okay? So the way that I'm doing it is I'm using the light and I'm gonna get them like lined up as well as I can. And then I'm just gonna cut all four layers at once because, you know, fast. Okay. They're pretty close, and if they're off just slightly by the time that I cut them, it's okay. So I like to say, you know, it's fine. It doesn't really matter. Um, if you have, um, <clears throat> if you have a rotary cutter that has a blade that's going dull, this is the time to use it. Okay. So I like to keep blades that are fresh and new and use them for my cuddle because it will cut so much easier. Um, and then I will use, if they start getting dull, then I can use them for cotton. And then when they've started getting dull on cotton, I will use them for paper. So that's what I'm doing now is using an older blade for cutting the paper so I can just be done with it. Okay. So you could use an X-Acto knife for this or whatever. I'm cutting it just slightly bigger than that rectangle that's on there because I just want to make sure that I'm safe and it doesn't really matter. There's a question about hooping cuddle fabric. Okay. That's it. Um, how do you? See how to, how to. <laughs> if I had an embroidery machine, I would absolutely, um, but I don't and I haven't done it before. Um, but I do know people who have and um, from what I understand, okay, so this is really just what I've heard from people who have done embroidery on cuddle is that, um, oh shoot, I can move these and I'm gonna be in trouble, um, is that you can totally do it and with regular cuddle, it absolutely works. Um, we have one, see if Renee will pop on later and she could answer questions um, on embroidery with it because I know that she talks about like floating it and using all sorts of things. But what I know about hooping it is it doesn't cause too many problems with the cuddle three. If you use other brands of Minky, that's where I've heard there's more problems with it leaving like a ghosting of the hoop on there that you can't seem to get rid of. So from what I know, cuddle works really well for it I haven't done it except for very basic little embroidery stitches on my um, crescendo okay all right um, so if anybody has experience with it I would love to have you pop on too and uh, share that with us okay so here is here are my pieces so this is my body my legs okay so it says what, what they are on there okay so I can get rid of these they suggest that if you want to you can um, keep these to identify your pieces later, okay? So um, I'll show you what I mean by that. Let's see, arms, legs, okay, they're all about the same size, so I'm just gonna cut these off. Um, and this is a little bit lighter, so you'll notice that this um, isn't a very dark printing. And it's just because I did it with light ink on mine in black and white. So in yours, when you print this, this will be in color. All right, much easier to read probably for you. But you can see they're gonna be identifiers, and we'll use those later. Okay, so I'm just gonna set those aside because we're gonna use them later. All right, so I'm gonna put the head and, oh, I took the muzzle off. Okay, so I'm gonna take the head and I'm gonna put this over here because we're not gonna do this yet. We're gonna do the other three parts. All right, so I'm just gonna set this to the side. We'll do that tomorrow, we'll make the head and stuff. Okay, so what I have is I have my pattern and I have my pieces of fabric, all right? So this is kind of, um, it might seem like a weird way of constructing it, but it absolutely works. So the way that they suggest that you do it, and you absolutely can, is just to wonder clip it along these edges, OK? 
Okay, and you're just going to wonder clip this guy on. Um, because I like to have things in place really hard, I'm also going to pin it a little bit because I really don't want it to move. Okay. Oh yeah, I cut this at nine inches because that's a quarter yard. So that's why it's a little long. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to pin this a little bit and or clip it a little bit and then I'm actually going to put some pins on there. And then we'll come sew it. And we'll do each of these individually. Okay. One of the things that I did differently on mine that worked really well was that I made marks on here so when I sewed it, and if you've been in any of my classes you've seen me do this, that when I do openings I do another stitch this way. So I'm going to go ahead and mark it so that I will remember because I want to take the stitches all the way to the edge. Then when I turn it, it'll flip inside out a lot better. It's one of those things that doesn't seem to make a lot of sense until you do it, and then it actually works really well. Okay, so we're gonna, um, we're gonna sew it. So I'm gonna sew it here, around here. Oops, there's arms too. Okay, and I'll bring it out. I'll show you when I'm doing this. And when we turn them inside out, you'll see why, it does, why I do that and how it works much, much better. Okay, so let's come on over to the sewing machine and I will show you what I'm doing. All right, so I'm going to get the sky turned on. Maybe. Did he come unplugged? It does not, but it does not appear to be coming on either. Oh, there it is. Oh, that's that. Okay. All right. Okay, so what I've got here is I've got my crescendo. This is the baby lock crescendo, which I really like. Um, and it's got a di digital dual feed on it, okay? So if you do not have one of these, because I don't expect everyone does, um, you need to have a walking foot on your machine. And it will make it much, much easier. So the thing that we always um, suggest that you have is a, a walking foot. And you're going to need a 9014 stretch needle and some polyester thread, okay? So if you don't have a walking foot on your machine right now, you'll want to get one. This part can be done without... Um, the walking foot, it'll just be a little bit more of a struggle. When we're doing the other stitches, you're really going to want it. Okay, so I'm going to put a few pins in here just to hold it really well for me. Was I supposed to do the heart first? Darn it. I am. Okay, we're going to do the leg first, guys. <laughs> I was like, darn it. <laughs> I forgot. Okay, let's do a leg and an arm first. And then we'll go back and I'll show you how to do that. All right. But I don't pin the whole thing, that was my point, is I don't put pins in the whole thing because it's a lot of pins and it will stab you more than you might want it to. Okay. So I'm just going to put a couple of pins just to hold it a little better than the Wonder Clips will. But it's actually going to sew pretty easily. So the Wonder Clips, you don't have to put a ton, just kind of holding it in place. All right, so there we go. All right, so I'm going to come up here and I'm going to do the same thing. Okay, with these leg openings. Okay, and I'm just going to mark this. And the reason I mark it is so I don't forget. Okay, that's the only reason. Um, it's just because it's easy to forget that. Okay, so I'm going to start up here. Move my wonder clip just a little bit so I can get my foot in here. Okay, normally when we're sewing, we want to up our stitch length to a 3.5. We're actually going to leave it at a 2.5 on this one because we want it to be close together so it's not going to sew really at a 2.5 it'll be fairly close but we want it to really perforate the paper so that we can tear it off all right so i'm gonna do a little lock stitch here all right and then i'm just gonna see if i can sew and i've got um i've got a polyester thread in here come on little guy there we go okay so i've got a polyester thread and a 9014 stretch needle and i'm just gonna follow right along here okay so when it gets down here, we're going to have a little curve, and so we just need to take our time with it here. And sew it. So now it's, start, it's starting to, to turn too fast, and I can't turn the paper fast enough, so I'm just going to lift this and rotate it and sew a little bit more. And then as it gets, it gets harder, I'll just move the, move the foot again if I need to. Okay. And that's a better way of doing than trying to shove it over. All right. 
So now we're going to come back to a straighter part, make it sew a little bit faster. All right, so we're just going to follow this line. You can totally do this where you cut out the pieces and then sew them together and not sew through the paper. Like that's possible. That's the way I did it the first time because sometimes I don't read instructions well. <laughs> but what I found is that when I did it that way, it was actually a little harder to sew because you're dealing with all of those curves and the whole fabric wants to move. Okay. So this makes it a little bit easier. All right, so I did one, I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna do the other one. You can see it's just sewn right through all of it. Okay, you can't see, can you see the stitches okay on there? Um, I know I used the same color thread, so you can see all the stitches here that it stitched through all of it. So when I'm done, I'm gonna tear the paper off and we'll have a pattern piece, okay? So now I'm gonna do the other leg. All right. We're just going to sew all the way around the same thing as I can sew fairly quickly until it starts getting tight. And then I'm just going to take my time. If, you're, if your um, stitches, I'll show you on the other side, if they're not perfectly smooth, it's going to be okay too. Um, just try your best. But honestly, Cuddle will, will hide a myriad of sins there because it's just so fluffy. Okay, so if your, your seams aren't perfectly smooth, they will look smooth in the end. All right, just gonna come up here, come to the end, and I'm just gonna sew right over here. And then I'll do a little lock stitch. Okay, you can back stitch there as well. Cut my thread and take it out. Okay, so on here, I'll show you real quick. So this, this part here, like I said, I've done a couple of these now, so I have some practice with the smooth. But if you have like a little part here that jags a little, it's okay. It's no big deal. That's going to totally hide in the end. Okay? So um, I'm going to go, I'm going to grab the uh, arms, and we're going to do that really fast as well. Okay? And then we'll come back and do the body. So put these guys together the exact same way that I did those little legs. Okay, and if you should cut this, so this is, this is just the right width for this, and you can see that the pattern goes pretty much to the edge. If you end up in a spot where this is coming off a little and it's going to take out here, just remember that this is your seam allowance, so it won't matter. Okay, we have a half inch seam allowance on this, um, so it's got plenty of room to wiggle. So if you have a little bit shorter seam allowance, it's all good. Okay, so I'm going to put some more clips in here. Should have one more clip somewhere. There we go. Oh, he's still on there. Okay. All right. So now we'll do the same thing. I'm going to make my little marks so I don't forget to sew that up. Okay. We're going to do it one more time. And this is the same idea. Okay. So one of the things, if you're using the walking foot, a lot of times, or the digital dual feet, a lot of times you end up knocking things back there. So um, I would like to use pins especially for that just because um, they will go underneath the foot and they, I don't have to take them off. The Wonder Clips, I often have to, to move them. Okay. So we're just going to sew around this guy. It's the same idea. We're going to take it nice and slow as we come around the curve. Okay, and you can see this feeds through really nice. One of the things with Cuddle is that when you're working with it normally, we don't have the paper here that will sort of give it a little extra stability. And uh, so it's kind of an interesting way of doing it. I've done it this way where you sew it, the pieces together and then cut them out. When I've done a little, I did a little um, burp cloth. We did a video for that one a while ago. Um, and we did that with the AccuQuilt, and it worked fine. But one of the other ways of doing, it, of doing it is just cutting out the pattern, stitching it down, and then actually cutting it out. And for things that are real curvy, it's, um, it's a good way of doing it. It's a good way of learning how to deal with the fabric. Okay, so I'm going to backstitch here. As you can see, you can totally do a lock stitch or backstitch. doesn't matter. All right, and then we'll do the other one. All right, same idea. Stitches right through. Okay. Do we have any other questions out there? Oh, oh what, um, what's the sewing machine? Oh, I have a, it's a Baby Lock Crescendo is what I have here, um, which is really, it's super nice. I love the Baby Locks. They're great. Um, I also sew with a couple other machines, and they're all good, but they're being used in other ways right now. Um, but the Baby Lock is awesome. Their digital dual feed is um, really good with the cuddle, so I like it. All right. 
See, I try to put off doing that little turn thing as long as I can, and then sometimes I just have to admit it. I have to turn it. The biggest thing with your machine is just making sure that it, um, it has enough ump to get the fabric through it. Part of that, too, is if you're having any trouble with your machine, one, you want to make sure that you have a walking foot. Um, that's the biggest thing. And then learn how to control your presser foot pressure. So if you don't know how to do that, look it up in your manual and see what you can find. Um, because it actually works really well. In here it's in the settings. On the Bernina it's on the side. And you're just going to change that so it lightens up the presser foot so it doesn't press so hard onto your fabric. And that will make it a lot easier to sew. Alright, so let's come back around and we'll do the little um, heart part. Okay, so I forgot we have one little part here that we're going to do. Okay, before we can sew that guy together. Okay, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I move, oh, there's this one. Okay, so I'm just going to use a little piece of this. You could do this in a couple of different ways. Okay, um, actually maybe I'll use this for the, Sorry, thinking on the fly. Um, <laughs> I'm going to do it a different way today. I'll show you how to do this um, the way that I've done it a couple other times. And then we'll, I'll show you how to do it with the sulky tomorrow with the other thing. Okay, so what I need to find is my heart pattern. Here it is. Okay, so this is the page that has the, um, the muzzle, the nose, and the heart. And these are all the pieces that are applique on. So tomorrow, we'll do the muzzle and the nose together. And then today, we're going to do the heart. And I'm going to show you how I did that one. Um, this is just a little bit different. Okay, sorry, I'm using fabric scissors on paper. Nobody panic. It's okay. Shh, I do it all the time. Okay. What was your pressure foot setting? Um, this one is just set normally, but normally I light, if I'm having any trouble with it, especially with a thicker one, I'll lighten it up two clicks. That's what I do. Okay. And on, um, on some of the other machines, baby locks and otherwise, um, that's usually what I've done is I've gone in there and I've tried to, I've lightened it like two steps or if it's like a three, then I take it down to a one. Um, and basically you just try it, see what happens. And if it needs to be tightened up a little, it feels a little too loose under there. Just tighten it back up again. Um, I have not had that be a problem. What I have done is lighten that up and then forgot to change it back and couldn't figure out why the cotton was sliding around so much under there, why I felt like I didn't have as much control. Yeah, that would be why. Okay, so now I've got my little pattern. So this is just one way of doing this. And it, I like doing my applique like this, so this is how I'm gonna do it, okay? So you can see I petted my fabric. Okay, see which way the nap goes. If I pet it this direction, it's not right. Okay, so this is the nap going down. This is the nap going in the wrong direction. You'll notice if I pet it this way, it doesn't really change it so much. If I get it all down, I pet it this way, pet it this way. Can't really tell a difference. So sometimes people get confused, but if you pet one way and then the other and it flips, this is top to bottom. Okay, so now I'm going to put my heart and you can see the nap is, you know, marked on there like that. I'm just going to stick this on here. And I'm going to trace around my little heart. Okay, and you could pin this in place if you wanted to, but I'm just going to hold it. Okay, and then what I'm going to do, sorry, bad position. Okay, and then what I'm going to do, because this is black, and if I cut this out and I don't cut that black off, you're totally going to see it. So I'm actually just going to cut it just on the inside of that line. Okay, so what I'm doing is cutting all of that black right off. Okay. So that when I do this, we don't have any black showing around the heart. Okay. So these are, like I said, these are the little Fomori scissors. Um, these are really great. I like them a lot. The other ones that I have are um, Karen K. Buckley's. So if you have those, those are good serrated scissors too. So I'm just going to snip off just that little bit of black, okay? So you can see, so if I leave the black on there, it doesn't get to, it doesn't get tucked under right. I'll be able to see it, okay? So now, get my heart. Can you see I'm just pulling the cuddle dust off? Oops, I can see. Can you see that, guys? I don't know if you can see that very well, but you can see the little bit of black right there, okay? So what I'm trying to do is get all of those off. So I'm just going to come back in here and just snip the very edge of that off, just the very edge of this, okay, because I don't want the black to show on it. All right, 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this guy on there. My heart is not going to be perfect. You can stitch it on there later. I'm just going to stick it on there where I think it should be. Okay. So I'm going to pin these together. I'm going to plop this guy in there. Doo -doo. Looks like where, where it should be. All right. You can sew this on later, too, if you want to. Okay. So I want my heart to go here. And I'm going to try to get my body back on right. The heart, I'm grabbing some 505 spray. Um, if your heart is not in the right, if your heart is not in the right place, it doesn't matter. Sometimes it does. <laughs> on this one, it doesn't matter. All right. So I'm going to grab a piece of scrap paper here. This is where I want my little heart to go. So I'm just going to mark it. Okay, I'm going to spray this baby down, do, 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 and I'm going to put it back in place, okay? So you can totally do this afterward and hand stitch them down, and that works too. That's like my, my old label, right? So this is the old label, and here's the new label, guys. So um, either one of them, you're going to find them at craft stores or um, your local quilt shop. And um, the 505 spray is the best um, basting spray of any around. Okay, so I'm going to take this back to the machine. I'm just going to stitch around this heart. So come join me over there real quick. Okay. okay and I'm going to hold him in place here. Okay. And if I use this little flat pin, what's going to happen is I can stitch all the way around this, and I cannot worry too much about that pin. So I'm going to start sewing here because this pin is going to hold it down until I get over to here, and then I'll take the pin out. Okay, so I'm going to stick this in here. This is where it gets funky to see because it's real little. Okay, so let me see. I think I'm going to switch this up and do my blanket stitch. I just have to find it. Is that it? Nope, that's the other one. There we go. There's a blanket stitch. Okay, so I'm going to shorten it just a little and I'm going to narrow it. Okay, because I just want to go right around this little heart. Okay. There we go. That'll be perfect. So one of the things, too, about Cuddle is that you can use your pins. I sort of just can pin it in, and it gives me something to grip as I'm turning it, which seems sort of strange but actually works really well because the fabric is so slippery that it kind of wants to move other places. Okay. And then I'm going to do a little... Oops, sorry. Okay. Do a little roundabout here around those hearts. Do you want to show them the um, the stitch lengths again? Because that'll be a question, I'm sure of it. Because I always want to know too. So how long did you do that? Okay, I'm just going to do this nice and slow around here. As I say, and then speed up on accident. Okay, there we go. All right, so you could stitch this down with a zigzag. You could stitch it down with um, just a straight stitch if you wanted to, whichever, you know, floats your boat. Okay, and then I'm going to pivot this so I can go around this little hump of the heart. So if you haven't done a blanket stitch before, they're actually pretty easy and they're super forgiving. Um, I really like the way that they look on Cuddle. Okay. So you can see, like, every once in a while, you just have to pivot, sort of keep in mind how the fabric is going. So I'm going to pivot again here after it comes back. Okay, so I can work around that heart. Um, when I, like I said, the thing about Cuddle that's really nice is that with this, um, the Lux Cuddle on the side here, it's totally going to hide any, like, weird stitches. So you can see the, the fibers are coming, oh, sorry, are coming up there. I'm just going to take my little pin and swoosh them out of the way. Okay. And now they're stuck down where I can see where I'm sewing. So don't be afraid to move the fabric. Okay. All right. Do one more. One more stitch, come on. Okay. And then I'm going to turn it. Stitch up just a tiny bit more to go back over where I was. And then I'll lock stitch it. Make sure it's all caught down. All right. Ta-da! All right, so now we can put this together. All right, so come on back. So here's the, here's the little heart. Okay, 
I'm gonna get my thread cut off there. All right, super cute, totally worked. What I can do is I can come up here and fluff out any of those stitches if I want to. Let's turn it over and look. Oh, it's not too terrible back there. Um, but you can see it's not perfect. There's a little spot I jimmied out here. It's fine, totally fine, doesn't matter. Okay, so now we've got that ready. So now we're gonna come over and I'm gonna put this back together. All right, <laughs> let's move that. Did you guys want to see what I was doing? Um, <laughs> all right, so I'm going to put this here, and I'm going to, again, look at this and try to get this doo -doo -doo, where it was. Okay. Close enough. All right, so now I bet. Yeah, I can feel it under there. Okay, so now I'm going to pin this down a couple times. We're gonna go back and do that one more time. Then we're gonna cut it out, okay? All right, so back over to the machine one more time. All right, and I've got my lines marked on this one already. So I'm gonna start sewing here. Do the same thing that we did before. This one will get a little bit funkier because we've got all these turnouts for the, um, oops, I'm gonna go back to a regular stitch. There we go. So the 2.5, middle of the road, okay. All right, I'm sure I'm not the only one who doesn't uh, switch their stitches back either, oops. Okay, so then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come here, do one more stitch, yep. And I'm just gonna pivot out and I'm gonna sew to the edge. I'm gonna lock my stitch. Actually, I'm gonna back stitch so I can get back a little further. There we go. Okay, and then I'm gonna clip my thread and then I'm gonna come to the next section. Okay, so we're gonna do this, this whole thing where we're coming down and then we're gonna go back out. And it might seem like it's a lot of extra work right now, but I promise that when, you when it comes to turning it inside out, you will appreciate it. Okay, so we're just gonna follow along the line. The pattern is really well done. It tells you where the openings are. This is your, gonna be your cutting line. This is your stitching line. So it's pretty easy to follow along. In, if you print it out in color, there's um, also color marking. So I believe it's printed red here where it's you know the don't sew part. Okay, so we're just gonna come around here and do the same thing. Pivot and sew off, okay. All right, do we have other questions? Everybody's just coming right along? Uh, the, only thing, <clears throat> the only thing that's coming up right now is folks are having a little bit of a hard time downloading the pattern, and okay. everybody's being uh, in, let know that they can uh, email you. Great, yep, I've got it, I will send it to you. Yeah, there have been a few little, like it works sometimes and it doesn't. I think it's, you know, it's a popular pattern and the internet is a little over, over uh, used these days, a little more than it's used to. So we will get you the pattern one way or the other, okay? Okay, whoops, went too far. Come on, back a stitch. The back stitch a little bit. All right. So everybody has my email address, right? So <laughs> Teresa at Shannon Fabrics. Send me some happy news, some cute pictures, yeah, and I'll send you a pattern in return. <laughs> And also, I'm the one who answers all of the consumer questions. So if you guys ever have questions since you're here, if you ever have questions when you're sewing with Cuddle, you can totally email me and give me your phone number and we'll, we'll chat over the phone. All right, and I do this lots. Okay, we're just gonna come right around. Do the same thing again. Oh, man, I'm about to give away. oh yeah, yeah, don't forget, leave comments. We'll, uh, We'll give it, we're gonna give one of these kits away with all of the fabrics and the necessary bits, including the polyfill. Um, so I'm gonna send you all of that so that you can make your own, okay? So I'm hoping that you'll make your own and then you'll have another one that you can make. So you can use it with, you know, a grand or your friend that you're sewing through FaceTime with. <laughs> okay, make it, for, make it for somebody that you love. All right, just a little bit more. Okay, last one. All right, and then we'll cut it, take it out, head back to the table. 
Okay. All right. So thanks for coming back and forth with me, guys. Um, all right, so what we've got here is we've got our piece, same way you can see. Oh, look, there's my little heart. Um, this is going to be just at the edge there. Um, okay, so this is the little sections we're going to cut out. It looks kind of funky, but you can sort of see now how this is going to work because this is where your head's going to go, your arms are going to go, your legs are going to go. All right, so now what we do is we're going to cut this. So um, you can do it a couple of different ways. You can cut through all the layers. You can cut out your paper first. I'm just going to actually use a rotary cutter to cut through all of it, and, um, and then we might have to use the vacuum cleaner, okay? Because <laughs> the vac this is going to make a lot of mess, okay? But I just want to get it done fast, so, um, so I'm going to use my rotary. might have to use my paper, or not my paper one. This, this one doesn't want to cut as well. Yeah, I'm going to use my regular rotary cutter because it's got a nice sharp blade. Yeah, see how much better that is? I tell you, in class, it's one of the things that I try to convince people a lot is to go buy themselves a new rotary cutter blade because, OMG, it makes all the difference having a nice sharp blade. Okay, all right, so now I've got this. So I'm going to very carefully pull this to the side and I'm going to throw it in the trash. So hold up. I'm going to get my little trash. Okay, and we're going to do this with each one. And then I'm going to take it and I'm just going to gently. So that's really the key with this stuff. Oh, sorry, I don't need my reading glasses anymore. Um, it's just the key is to just, you know, move it as gentle as possible until you get it so you can throw it in the trash. All right. And then you're going to do a lot of vacuuming. Um, <laughs> and afterward, I use a cute little handbag. Actually, we'll have to show you the handbag because it's the one I use all the time and it works really, really well. Okay. Oh, there's my handbag. Thanks. Thanks, Hawk. So here's my little handbag. We're going to use it in just a second. Clean off the board. Um, it works really well. This is the brand that I totally recommend. <laughs> Lots of people ask, which one do you use? Um, and weirdly, it makes a difference because a lot of vacuums, this one blows air out the rear and a lot of them blow them out the side, which makes a bigger mess with cuddles. So. Yeah. All right, so we're just going to cut this all the way around. And you can see if I move the paper, you know, the fabric, the whole thing, it's a little bit easier to cut that. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. And cut all the way around. I'm moving it a lot. It's making a mess. back around all right so there we've got those so I'm gonna take these pins out okay I'm gonna take them over here try to make some cuddle dust you know go in the trash okay so you can see we're just vacuum this Woo! We make a mess, we clean it up. It all works, because in the end, it's soft and yummy. So if you wanted to take your time and not make a mess with these, you can absolutely cut them out slowly with the little scissors. Um, I just figured y'all didn't want to watch me do that, because that could be a while. We'll have to start talking about all sorts of other things, because I would run out of cuddle stuff to talk about. Um, okay, so we're gonna do this. So I've got this one, okay. Put that to the side. Okay, take my clips out. So like I said, most of the time, I mean, like it, do, it does, obviously, you can see, it'll make, like, you can see how much more mess it makes with me cutting it with the rotary cutter too, which is why I use that blade a lot, okay? The other thing is, is it'll make a mess, but it totally cleans up, okay? And that's really been my, um, my MO is just to try to clean it up as I go. So you can see this works too. Sorry, it's gonna be loud. And that'll take off the bulk of it. And then you just give it a little flip flip. Okay, that works with um, your strips too. And I totally do that with my strips when I'm cutting them for like strip clothes and stuff. All right, so let me get this cleaned up just a little bit. All right, okay, so 
so now we get our stuff out of the way. I'll put my tools back. All right, so now we have all of these little shapes, and I'm going to get my pieces back together in pairs because the arms and the legs are just a little bit different. You can see that they're different sizes, okay? So what we're going to do now is we're going to turn them inside out. I'm going to do them one set at a time. So like I said, I don't get confused as to which one is which. We're going to start with the legs because they're a little bit bigger. All right. So the way that this works is we've sewn through all of it. So now we can take our paper off. Okay, so it works just like paper piecing. What I have found is that I do want to give it a little oomph and you want to hold it. So if you can see this, I'm going to hold my, my fingernail right along the paper and I'm going to kind of give it some pressure back here. So once I fold it, you can see this is where I had not folded it prior and it doesn't want to tear as easily. So I'm just going to fold it as I go and give it a little press and then hold it tight with my finger and pull it some more. Okay, so just work your way around it like this. What happens is if you're not careful with it, it's easy to um, pull the stitches, which you don't want to do. So that's why we're using a smaller stitch here. Because like I said, normally we, we up our stitch length when we're working with cuddle. But in this regard, we really want to um, we want to tear that paper. And the paper makes it feed through a little bit easier. So it works. Because um, yeah, if you do this with a bigger stitch length, it will tear your stitches. Ask me how I know. Yeah sometimes I think I know more than I do. Um, <laughs> okay, so you can see this is tearing out really nice and easy. I'm just going to, basically it's just like, you know, sort of, I don't know what you call that. It's getting it ready to tear. Okay, so once we've done that, then I can pull out the middle. So I found it much easier to tear off the edges and then pull out the middle than to pull out the middle first. Okay, pulling out the middle gets a little bit um, funkier. And definitely not as easy. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing again. Okay, and at this point it doesn't matter. Right is left, left is right. Okay, they're basically the same at this point. Um, won't matter until we attach them. But you can see they definitely have a direction that their feet are going. Okay, so like this one sort of curves. And that little, that little round part is the foot. Okay, so they do make paper that is... Um, like foundation paper piecing. So if you have you have that, you could totally use it. Um, and it would tear out really super easily. This is just regular typing paper that I had in my printer. Okay, and it tears fine, but it does need that extra little crease to make sure that you're not um, putting any extra tension on your fabric that you don't need to. Okay. Okay, so you can see here I didn't get it quite torn, so I'm gonna have to come back and fix that. And it's better to come back and try to fix it later, get the rest of it out, instead of just pulling and tearing it. Okay, so be, be gentle with it. Okay, if you get pieces that are stuck in there and they seem like they're permanent, just leave them there. It's all right. They'll come out eventually. Okay, so you can see I just kind of kind of scratch it up. And then we've got it. Okay, give it another good shake. Okay, so now we've got our pieces sewn. All right, super easy. You can see here is one of those examples where I came off the edge, so my seam allowance it didn't actually hit the half inch. It's totally fine. It just needs to be somewhat close. You can also see my seam allowance is not perfectly even because I just whacked it out with the rotary cutter, and that's okay too. Okay, so let me throw my trash away. All right, so then we're going to do, uh, we're going to turn it inside out, and then we'll put them aside. Okay, so what we're going to do is you're just going to turn it. All right, so what I do is I just fold this in, and I'm going to push this. So this is where, so I can get my thumb partly in, but it gets real skinny. And on those arms, you can see it gets even skinnier. So there's no way to really get your finger through there. So that's when something like this guy comes in really handy. So you can use, you know, a point turner, a chopstick, pencil, all sorts of things. I can take this down here, and with that little rounded end, I can sort of push this out. Okay, and get those to come around. You can see I didn't clip my curves. Normally when we're sewing curves, especially this tight of a curve, we would, we would come in here and we would clip out these little notches so that it would turn easily. The way that it works with cuddle, because it's a knit and because it's so fluffy, even if it's not a perfectly round bit right here, you can't really tell. So I can tell if I feel it. There's a little flat spot right there. But visually, it's really hard to tell if it's not perfect. So we don't clip any of those because, you know, there's no reason to. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing here. Get it started, get it shoved in there. 
And then I use the rubber tip of this one to shove it in. So you want to use something that isn't sharp for that part because it's real easy to accidentally stick a hole right in it. Okay, so then I'll stick this end in and kind of swish it around, make sure that that's pushed out. Okay, all right, so then we've got two little legs. So this is where you can see how they're, they curve. When they go in the body, this is how they need to go is in that direction where they sort of curve in toward each other, all right? Um, so right now, you don't need to do anything special about that, except just remember that when you put them in, that's the way they go. Can you talk about this tool one more time? Yeah, so this is, um, this is from Clover, and it's, I'm trying to remember what it's, it's their stiletto, and it's actually pretty cool because this one has a, it has a rubber, like a silicone tip, I think, which lets you do pressing with this. So you could actually, like if you were doing ironing, you could hold this and you can iron right up to this and it doesn't melt it, which is what its original purpose is for, is for um, precision ironing. Um, but I really like it because it's, it's kind of grabby because of that, so I can push things inside better. Um, it's from ja Joan, Joan Holly, I think is her name, um, but it's a clover tool, okay? So that I do know it's from clover, and their tools are great. I really do, um, I love a lot of their stuff. So in the, um, in the pattern, they call for a different point turner, and it's not one that I have, but it works easily well. This is just one that I have. Okay, so now we've got our legs put together, all right? So now I'm gonna stuff them. So I use, um, the one that I really like is this royal silk. All right, this one is um, a little bit harder to find. The one that you have probably or that you've seen is this. And it's made by the same people. Uh, but this one is a little, um, I don't know if you can see the difference. I might have to open it up for you guys so you can see. Okay, so this is normal polyfill and it's kind of um, coarse, I guess would be the right word for it. Okay, this is the royal silk. Okay, so I'll show you the difference. So this one is the Royal Silk made by Fairfield as well. This is the Polyfill. So this is just a lot finer, okay? It isn't available everywhere, so you have to look for it a little bit, but it's definitely my preferred stuffing. Um, but this is just regular Polyfill, and this is what's available in a lot of places. This won't um, clump up as much, and it's a softer, just a softer feel overall, okay? But both of them are Fairfield um, and available in lots of quilting stores and craft shops and all that sort of stuff, okay? And um, we use these when I do the stuffed animals, when we do like the bigger ones, and you can use about half of the bag for each stuffed animal, a little bit more if you want it to be nice and stiff. So for these feet, what I have found is that if I use about a good fistful, is what you need. Um, so what I did when I did the others is I just found a fistful and then I found another fistful, which is about what I've pulled out, maybe a little more, okay? And then I'm gonna, I have about the same for each one, okay? Does that make sense? So I wanna make sure that I'm like, not one leg is really full and one leg isn't. The way that they have you do this, which I think is really clever, is that you are going to just fill a little bit of this, okay? So we're just basically gonna fill the feet because when we do it, he's a super floppy little guy, which is really fun, but there's no stuffing in this part at all. So we just stuff it part of the way, and which gives him this extra floppy little nature. Um, I haven't tried stuffing him more because I actually think that's really cute. Okay, so I'm just gonna shove some in, and then I can use this tool some more. And because it sort of grabs into it and it has a flatter end, it pushes it in pretty well. So I found that you could also use a rubber eraser um, like the, the rubber eraser part of your pencil will sort of do that same thing and grab it and push it down. But if you've got one of these tools, it's a great use for it. Okay, I'm just going to shove that in there. Sort of push it in. And then as I'm down there, I'm going to make sure that I'm getting all of those edges nice and out. Okay, you can see these stitches, okay, and they all get tucked in there, which is how, sort of how you can see if it's nice and smooth. We'll talk about how to get those out in just a little bit because that, to me, is one of the things that makes um, it so much nicer in the end is when you get those, those fibers out. Okay, so I'm going to shove that in there. It comes up the leg just a little bit, same as this one, okay? Up the leg just a little, and this part is um, empty. It shows you that in the pattern. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So right here, it's going to tell you to stuff it, okay, about halfway, and it tells you to stop just past that 
where the curve is, okay? So all of this stuff, they'll tell you in the patterns um, how to do that and um, not necessarily why you want to do it, but how to do it, okay? So then I'm just going to stuff the other one the exact same way. Shove that stuff down a little at a time. Okay, I really do like this tool because it makes it stuffing a little bit easier. I get some more of that shoved in. There we go. Okay, I'm going to get that nice and stuffed. I'm going to do this exact same thing with our um, arms. So um, if you haven't told us yet where you're um, joining us from, that would be awesome. What was that? City and state, tell us where you're from. We'd love to know. We're in, like I said, we are going to do at the end, we're going to do um, a comment giveaway. So basically, like every time you comment, you get another entry, which is pretty cool. So um, uh, do that. Let us know where you are. If you have questions, I'm really happy to answer them um, about specific tools or about the fabric in general. Um, just so you know, the uh, I'm going to do the arms now. Okay, so here's my legs. So this is where these guys come back. Okay, is these little guys. So this one says, can bare legs. Okay, so I'm gonna stick this here. I'm gonna stick a pin through so I can't lose them. Okay, and I can set those to the side and then I don't get them confused with the arms because the arms look exactly the same. Well, not exactly, but you know, close enough that it would be easy enough to confuse. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing with the arms, but I was gonna tell you guys, so, um, the cuddle fabric is 100% polyester. It's a knit fabric. You can see that this is a knit backing, okay? And it is um, machine washable. So it's one of the things that I think is a real great part of this fabric is that it's totally machine washable. This little guy gets dirty. Anything that you make with it, the blankets, they are washable. The only thing you need to remember is that you should wash it in cold and dry it in a cool dryer, low heat, okay? Because it's a polyester, you gotta treat it like it's a polyester. And, um, but it will wear forever and it washes up really nicely. One thing that we found is that if you dry it on a cool dryer and then don't completely dry it, pull it out, let it hang to dry the rest of the way, and then throw it in the dryer to fluff it, it'll actually, it the fluff, will reside, will stay forever, basically. It'll um, work really, really well. Okay, so you can see I've got some little bits. I'm just gonna scratch them up, make them come out. Okay, Pull. there we go. Okay, and like I said, if they don't all come out, if you've got one that's, you know, decided it wants to live there, just let it. Okay, so there's one arm. I'll do the other one. So, um, washing and drying, cool heat, cool water. Do not use liquid softener, okay? One, the fabric is ridiculously soft already, and two, it likes to stick to the fiber. So you can totally use a dryer sheet if you want to. There's just really kind of no need to because of the kind of fabric that it is, um, but don't use liquid softener. Otherwise, you're good to go with um, any other kind of detergent. We haven't found anything that didn't play well otherwise, okay? So machine washable and dry it dryable and of course the polyfill is as well so these are absolutely washable which at this time is extra important <laughs> okay all right so I've got my arms taken I'm gonna do the same thing and I'm gonna grab about a handful of stuffing okay, okay. I'm gonna stuff those guys just exactly the same so I'm gonna do this, bring it around. Anything else exciting happening out there, Hawk? No? Okay. Everybody's happy? Oh, that's great. I'm so excited. So when you guys are done and you make your own of these, I really want you to come back and post pictures, okay? You can send us pictures or you can um, post them on Instagram and tag us. We um, have a couple of different um, hashtags that we're using for it. So one is Kimber Bear or Kimber Bear Story. Um, and that's a great one to use and we'll be able to see them. And so will the people at Kimber Bell and Clover. So, um, and we've all worked together to make this really cute. We, they did the pattern basically. And then um, we made the fabric and Clover made the tools. It was a great, um, it's been a great little project to do together, but 
we want everybody to see it so please share your pictures and if you don't already you can follow us on Facebook you can follow us on Instagram Pinterest all of those things and we have a bunch more tutorials that are available Let's see if I can get that to shove um, a bunch more tutorials that are available on YouTube so you can find us there so if you're interested in working with cuddle in any of our kits or stuff like that we have lots of tutorials there that we've done and um and then we're going to do this every week while i'm stuck at home and i can't get out and teach you guys in the shops i am totally going to do classes here in my home studio um, so i'm kind of excited about that okay so one arm done here comes another one um, can you use beans or rice to fill it, you absolutely could, um, and you could put, be really cute, they have like little um, like poly pellets or um, things like that that you can put into its little feet that would make it um, even more floppy, which I think would be adorable. Um, I use the little pellets a lot when I'm doing bigger stuffed animals that I want them to sit up, so, um, but this one you absolutely could, yeah, totally would work. So if you've got them, use them. Yeah. All right. This little guy's going to go in there. Come on. Okay, so you can make this, like I said, make it out of a bunch of different fabric, but I do definitely recommend that you use a, the cuddle, and I'll show you why. Um, a lot of it is just because the cuddle will, um, it just hides so many things. It's great, but it's, and it's so soft and yummy. If you haven't worked with the Lux Cuddles before, you're really missing out because it's just the softest fabric around. And it's super flexible for using, like, I love it for stuffed animals. I don't know if you guys saw, I have like little stuffies here. Okay, I love the stuffed animals. They're super cute and easy to make. Okay, all right, so I used half of that because those little arms are small. Okay, so I just divvied it up into two little arms, okay? So now I've got my arms, and I'm going to use my little tag again. Now I'm going to put these guys together, and I'm just going to pin them. Okay. All right. So now I've got my arms, and now we can do the body. We're going to do the exact same thing. And this one is just a little bit funkier because we've got all of those um, little side stitches that go out. So we're going to have a lot more papers is all it is. Okay. Okay. and then we'll turn these out we're not going to stuff the body yet because we're going to wait until we put the arms and the legs in there so the first time that I did this just in case you guys think that um, you want to try it the first time I did this um, I decided to just cut all the pieces out and sew them together that way and then it became an issue of how to put the arms and legs on um, and it made it much harder. So I will say that this construction of just putting the legs in there, so what I had done is I sewed a front and a back basically and then tried to sew it together. Um, and I thought it might be slightly easier and it wasn't. So if you're thinking, oh, I would just do it this way, I can verify this way is actually easier. Okay, okay. And then I've got one more. And then those little sections here on the side these are all, these are where the little openings are, okay? So I just give it a little tug, pops off the stitches pretty well, okay? And we're just gonna take that off, all right? So now we've got our body, and I'm just gonna turn this inside out, but like I said, we're not gonna stuff it yet because we wanna sew those together, and we're gonna do that in a couple of days, okay? So tomorrow we're gonna make the head, and, um, and then we'll put the body together. So now we're gonna take this all the way out. All right, so this is what I've got for a body. What happens where I've got those little legs coming out is that now, and you can't really see it, but it folds in. We kind of can because you can see that it folds in really nicely all the way around here. So I kind of have to search for the little holes that the arms and the legs are gonna go in, but they're nicely hidden in the seam. So it keeps, um, it keeps this running in the same direction, which is what we want. So it makes it nice and smooth as it comes around. Okay, so that's why I do these little things, because you can see they just pop right in there. And then we're gonna come up here, we'll find it. There's a the little hole for the arm, so the arm will go in there. And then we have all these sides. So let me show you really quick, because this is something you can do along the way or at the end with the, um, this guy, this, the Annie, um, the by Annie Stiletto. 
okay? So I really love this thing for a lot, and we'll use it later when we're sewing them together, but the other thing is to take it and to kind of scrub it along here, and you can see it just pulls all the fibers right out of those seams, okay? Really, really nicely, so I'll do it on the arm, I'll show you. Okay, so you can see, here's our side and it's stuck in. All along here you can see the, the fibers are just stuck inside because the way that it was sewn down. So I just come along here and I kind of just scratch it up. You can be slightly rough with it. It'll be too, too terrible to it, but you can be slightly rough and um, because it's polyester and the thread is polyester, it's not gonna, it's not gonna snap. But you can see how smooth that makes it versus up here where I haven't pulled it out and it just gets stuck. So this is what it looked like before, okay? So you can see all of those fibers stuck in there. And I'm just gonna come along here, scratch it up. And just pulls all of those fibers right out. You can do that with a pin, it works okay. Um, it's not as easy, it's not as quick. This thing makes it just super fast and easy to do that. Okay, and I can come back and just scratch those all up. So what I'll do before I put it all together is to make sure those are all nice and smooth and that the edges look really nice. So you can see the difference in, uh, in how, how much better it looks when that's all pulled out, okay? So that's what you're gonna do. So if you haven't, if you're gonna sew it tonight, which is what I'm hoping you'll do, okay? Is I'll, and I'll get you patterns as soon as I get off of here. Okay, is I want you to sew these guys up. I'm gonna put my arms back together here. Um, I want you to sew them up and fluff out those stitches, okay? So the arms, the legs, and the body, all right? And then, oh look, there's a little heart. So cute. Um, and then tomorrow we're gonna put together his face. And so the, the face we're gonna actually gonna use um, the tearaway, the sulky, um, it is called Solvi Water Soluble Stabilizer. We're gonna use that. If you don't have this, you could use, um, you could use tissue paper if you have that at home or anything that's really light and terrible. Um, you might be able to use the foundation paper piecing paper. I'm not really sure, the see-through thing is really nice, um, but if you have like white tissue paper, that would work as well. Um, or obviously the stabilizer is the best thing to use for, it works really well, but not everybody has it super available. Um, so we'll do this tomorrow, so you'll need this, you'll need your fabric, we're gonna do the face, um, the, um, the little muzzle, the little stuffing of that, which is super cute, and how we're gonna stitch that all down. So um, tomorrow will be the head, we'll get that together, and then you can join me on Thursday, is that what it'll be? <laughs> it's hard to remember the days of the week. I think today's Tuesday. Wednesday and Thursday we'll put it all together, um, and you'll make yourself a cute little bear. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, I need Michael out there somewhere to choose a random um, number in the comments. And, um, and we can choose a winner, okay? So he's gonna choose a random comment and let us know who it is. And then um, I will get together a little package for you that will include the um, kit. So it has, yep, so it has all of the fabric, the bits that you're gonna need, the thread, um, the extra bit for the um, heart and the nose and as well as polyfill. Um, and I'll send you some of both of them, of my favorite and the other, um, just in case you need that, okay? And. Uh, yeah, and then you'll have a little kit to make. So if you have the stuff at home, make it up. Join me tomorrow. We'll be back um, at 11 o'clock to do the little face. And um, make sure to follow us on Facebook, and it'll let you know. So if you're not already following us or haven't liked us, uh, go ahead and do that because it'll let you know when we go live. It'll send like a little alert for you. Okay, and like I said, you can also follow us on YouTube and Instagram and Pinterest and all of those social media sites. And we'll be doing this a lot. So if you have ideas on things that you want to learn as well, please comment that and let me know because we need to keep, you know, coming up with things for you to like. Um, did Michael come up with the number for us yet? We got, we got something. I tell ya, trying to do all of this stuff at one time, two people in a house. But it's super fun. I'm really glad you guys are here. Okay. Like All right, Michael. I need a number. Any number. <laughs> so if you haven't commented yet, now's the time. We're going to get one in there and find a winner. So make sure that you have your fabric. Um, if you have any questions on the tools, too, and if you're wondering if something else will work just as well, let me know because there are lots of variations on what we use. Um, but just a reminder, the clover pins are my favorite. They work really well with this. Um, the heads don't fall off is the biggest thing and they're always sharp. So um, make sure that you've got some clover pins and some wonder clips and a stretch needle is really important too. All right, do we have something, um, Hawk? No number yet. Uh, can we talk about what might happen if you wanted to overfill them a little bit? 
If you, yeah, if you, if you overfill them, you can totally do that, stuff them up. Um, what will just happen is that these will actually have more, um, they'll be more round instead of being so flat here and floppy, um, which makes them sort of cute is that they're just like this floppy, silly little thing. Um, makes them very cuddly. So you could absolutely do it and these will just have more, more body. They'll stand out more. So right now they flop because they're not filled. If they were filled, you could, they're going to stick out like this. Okay, that'll be the biggest thing, is they're just going to have, have more body, all right, and stand out a little bit more. Okay, that's the biggest, biggest thing with it. And like I said, the Fairfield, the, um, the Royal Silk is what this brand is, and I really like it. Um, it isn't, you know, the one and only, but um, it's actually, it's really good. I like it a lot. I like it a lot, a lot, and it makes it, yeah, for huggable animals. <laughs> Which is a perfect way of describing that. <laughs> we have a winner. Okay. Is he going to post it on there? I guess we're going to, yeah. He might be posting. He might have to post it on there. Okay. All right. So did Michael say he has a winner? Is that who did it? Shannon. 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 Yeah. It's Michael. Hi. Yeah. So he'll post the winner. Um, that'll be great. So I will send you. He'll let me know. He'll probably get a hold of you. So somebody at Shannon will get a hold of you and find out where to ship it. Okay, and so after this is over on Friday, I will um, I will get it all. Gowdy Rose. Yay! From Arizona. From where, Arizona? Buckeye. From Buckeye, Arizona. Very nice. You know what's so funny is um, <laughs> totally random, but on my Facebook, um, you know how they do those memory things. The one that came up this morning was I was in Phoenix one year ago. So yay for Arizona. I loved that trip. It was great. So um, I'll get there again. I promise. So thank you very much for coming. Congratulations on winning. I will send those out later this week. Um, like I said, if you have any questions, comments, you want to know something extra, um, go ahead and leave a comment. Otherwise, come back tomorrow. We'll be here again at 11, 10? 10. We were here at 10. <laughs> we're here at 10 a.m. That's what we'll be here tomorrow, too. It's 10 a.m. And like I said, we'll do the face, the head, and uh, get that all put together. Make sure you've got your supplies, and, uh, and we'll do it. We'll have a good time. Thanks for joining me today. I really appreciate it, and we'll see you tomorrow, guys. Bye.